Exodus chapter 33, Exodus 33, Exodus 33, we'll start reading in verse 12, Exodus 33, verse number 12, sounds like everybody's there, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and then we'll read, Heavenly Father, thank you this morning for your goodness and grace, thank you for the good testimony that we heard this morning about your faithfulness and about your goodness and your power, thank God uh, that you are uh, faithful. Thank God that you are very powerful and you're able. The Bible says you're the great physician. We love to hear about when you've touched somebody and helped them and healed them. And Lord, we also like to hear about you touching somebody's heart and saving them, God, and helping them and cleaning them up. And Lord, we all need that. We all need cleansing and sanctification and help from above, God, in these things. In our hearts, our minds, our flesh, God, very weak, and Lord, we pray that you'd strengthen us now by your word. Lord, we have met together here, God, to hear your word, and Lord, we pray that you'd help us and help churches that are uh, like ours. Dear God, help any church that's reading the word of God, help them to get the benefit from it, but Lord, we do have friends all over the place, God. Uh, think about Brother Jim, Brother Glenn Stocker. Uh, think about Brother Mark in the hospital. We know he'd love to be in your house this morning preaching your word. Lord, I thank, you. I thank you and praise you, God, for our friends and pray that you'd help them. Have mercy on them. Many more friends than that. God needs your help this morning. We pray that you'd be with them, be with us. Lord, there are folks all over the world going through all sorts of things, God, but here we are uh, in this little place, God, and we pray that you'd help us and be with us, God, moving our hearts and, and our lives, and we'll thank you, God, for what you do. And we know that whatever... You do, it'll be through your word. We know the devil would like to steal the word, God, and, and Lord, uh, keep it from bringing forth fruit. But Lord, we pray, oh God, now that you'd exalt your word, God, and get Amen. glory from it. Amen. We'll thank you and praise you, God, for everything that you do. In Jesus Christ's name, we ask these things. Amen. Amen. All right, Exodus chapter number 33. Uh, just uh, not much of a... Uh, uh, not much of a description here, but I'll give you just a little bit of a description here. Now, uh, God is about to have Moses do a big job, which is to uh, lead people and uh, lead them from one place to another. It, it's not easy uh, to lead people from one place to another uh, it just as it concerns beliefs or principles or ideas. It's very hard to get somebody to change positions uh, regarding what they believe or what they think or how they feel about a thing. That's a very big thing. Most people don't believe nothing. They just feel something about something. Uh, what do you believe about this? I don't know. Well, I just feel like, well, that's not what I asked you. I didn't ask you what you felt. I asked you what you believe. And if you got, uh, you, uh, I recommend you do have feelings about what you think, but I recommend you get a solid biblical beliefs first and then get some feelings attached to that and don't move from it because I'm telling you more than that any other time now not to say that it wasn't being done in the past but right now uh, the Lord's at the door and I believe the devil's working overtime uh, to try to get people away from the from uh, Christianity from the Bible and so in that sense I say more than at any other time the devil is uh, working hard, the world is working hard to get people to give up their idea of biblical Christianity. Now, the kind of uh, quote-unquote Christianity where everybody, you know, focuses on the family and all this kind of stuff. Uh, listen, you focus on God, you'll get your family right. Amen. You, you, get, your, you get your mind set on God, God will show you how to uh, deal with your finances. And, uh, but I don't believe God ever called nobody to, uh, to come into a church and get in the pulpit and encourage people to save money or cut their credit card bills or nothing like that. I mean, the Bible says, oh, no, man, nothing. I guess we're all uh, g guilty of that. But, man, you get your heart right on God. God will help you to get your mind right about your family and your finances and stuff. Uh, but God called us here. God called uh, people to be saved. And once you're saved, God called you here uh, to, to help you get from, from where you are now to heaven. There's a, I don't know how long it'll be. Uh, some of us it'll be shorter than others uh, some of us will live longer than others and then maybe the rapture will take place tomorrow but we are heading somewhere we're not just here forever and uh, all we're looking for is to get old and die we're going to heaven and so that ought to be our principal idea that ought to be our principal motivation uh, about these things but it's hard enough to get people to change what they think or what they feel 
But Moses is not only uh, charged with uh, giving these people religious ordinances, but he's also got to take them from one part of the world and move them to another part of the world. Uh, the, uh, the sane person says one thing at a time. Uh, there is no such thing as multitasking. Some people think they can do lots and lots and lots of things at one time. Well, you're doing lots of things bad if you're doing that. Amen. So one thing at a time. But Moses is charged with multitasking in a sense. He's got to move all these people all around. They're hard-headed, first of all, and then they're setting their ways, second of all. So he's got a task. He's got to change. He's got to give them a, a whole new, uh, quote-unquote, religious system to live by and to go by. Plus, he's got to make a move, and they don't have uh, UPS to send their goods or pods or uh, Penske or U-Haul or anything like that. They got to walk. And uh, if you want to get somebody in a bad mood, just make them walk. I was talking to these fellas over here before service, uh, trying to say hello to them because they're Marines. You run into some Marines, you say hello to them and bow a little bit. You don't have to bend all the way over. Just nod like, like you've got some respect. But anyway, these boys know something about walking. Uh, put a pack on your back. And, and if you're as little as I was when I was in the Marines, a pack weighed more than me. And uh, get up early, early, early in the morning for no good reason because you ain't getting started before 10 a.m. anyway. It didn't make any difference. You get up early, 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 early in the morning, rush, uh, rush around, get yelled at for stupid stuff, and then, uh, you know, get out there at 10 o'clock. It's already hot. They tell you to get up early because it's going to be hot after a while and you're going to get moving before everything gets hot. But they make you wait yeah. until it gets hot before they do anything. And then... Put a pack on your back and move 25 or 30 miles. Man, you're talking about grumbling. And they put the, the, they put the tall people up front and put the short people in yes, the back sir. and tell you yes, to keep sir. up. Yes, and uh, the, the line gets stretched out like this, and then they make you run, and it comes back like this, and it's just like a slinky yeah. uh, from point A to point B. And, man, it's, it's the most miserable thing you've ever tried to do is put all the stuff you own on your back and move from one place to another. Yeah. And God says to Moses, make that happen and be happy about it. <laughs> I am the Lord your God. <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks a lot, God. <laughs> appreciate it. I know you never think like that, but I do because I'm a person. Yeah. Amen. Uh, man, uh, my grace is sufficient for thee. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't that the way you think? I know I know you do think that way. You know, you're supposed to be spiritual and say, oh, I trust God with all my heart. Well, yeah, yeah, you're supposed to, but you don't. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, if you did, things would be wonderful, but we don't. They, 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 I mean, you're supposed to. I'm not saying you're not supposed to. I'm just saying you don't do what you're supposed to do, man. You complain and murmur and all this kind of stuff. Oh, God, forgive me. And uh, I don't know why he loves me. I, I don't know why he loves you either. I don't know why he loves me. I mean, I, I understand it uh, literally, but uh, we're pretty bad, ain't we? We, we surely are. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, I know the real thing about things a lot of times, but man, we just, we don't, me we never do measure up. And understanding it sometimes is a great curse. I mean, I thank God for everything He's showed me and everything I know, but knowing, you know, G.I. Joe says knowing's half the battle, but man, I'll tell you what, uh, y'all were kids, right? Y'all watched G.I. Joe. <laughs> Uh, knowing can be a great curse sometimes, you know. I, sometimes I think you know something, that's just something else you got to be accountable for. <laughs> I'm not trying to discourage you from reading your Bible, but hey, uh, what we've got in Christianity, now listen, that is true. What you know you're going to be accountable for. Yeah. And a lot of times we, uh, we over-educate the unwilling. Yeah. We really do because you got to be careful. You know, you get somebody saved and you start trying to teach them, you know, uh, the gap theory or some far out thing like that. They only been saved two weeks. Man, you're, you're dumping a heavy load on somebody that's supposed to be, you know, drinking milk. You know, you wouldn't give your little newborn baby chili, uh, or, you know, fish tacos. Uh, that kid can't handle that, amen. So, but we do. We we uh, the things we know, we're gonna have to give an account for. Sometimes I think, man, I wish I wouldn't have learned that. Yeah. Uh, I wish I didn't know that. I wish I was blissfully ignorant. But no, we we really do have to mature and grow up and learn some things and apply some things. 
and, and take account, accountability for things. I do know that. But Christianity is not just learning about when the rapture is going to take place and, and when the second advent is going to be. And it's not about that. Christianity really is about God. Uh, Christianity is God-centric. You need to know God. You need to learn how to be with God and walk with God and talk with God. And some people think that God is an old gray-bearded man sitting up there in the universe. That is not God. Uh, first of all, I know that's not God because the Bible says no man has seen God at any time. You don't know what God looks like. You've got an idea of what you think God is. That's not God at all. God is a spirit. Yeah. And God dwells in the light that no man can approach unto. And so how in the world do we get to approach to him? There is a way to do it. The Bible says no man has seen God at any time. It says no man can see God and live. So what a, what a great thing it is. What, a, what an awesome thing it is. And I say that in the, not as a you know, teenager would use the word awesome, but as the, the literal sense. Of the, it's all it, it ought to strike all into a person to think that we as Christians could approach to God and know who God is and talk with God and carry on a conversation with God. Like I say, most people have this idea of God sitting up in, in heaven somewhere with the lightning bolt ready to kill everybody and anybody. And He certainly will do that. God will take a man's life. He will, God's very severe. The Bible says we know the severity of God. Well, God is very severe, but that's, that's not all that God is. Uh, uh, you, uh, in the New Testament, uh, Paul is trying to pray, and he's trying to ask God to help him and to heal him. We talked about that a little bit in Sunday school, or at least uh, somebody talked about that. Uh, Brother Cody talked a little bit about that in Sunday school, about how God had helped his kid and, and brought him through a surgery, and now he's in the process of healing. Uh, God can do all those things. God can certainly do that. God can certainly help a person and do these things. But listen, we think about God as, as uh, a means to an end most of the time. God's going to help me with my health, and God's going to help me with this and that. And Paul's praying, God, help me and heal me. And God says, no, my grace is sufficient for thee. And in that sense, that strikes uh, what we call the fear of God, what the Bible calls the fear of God. Uh, it's very, uh, it can be a very uh, serious situation when you're praying about health and stuff like that or when you know that God has the power to have you live or to have you die or to have you uh, increase in goods or decrease in goods. And you see that in the Bible all the way through. God does that in men's lives. He sets one up and takes another one down. That's a fearful thing. Those are fearful things. And you see that illustration in the New Testament where Paul says, uh, I want to have you remove this thorn that I have in my flesh. And God says, no, my grace is sufficient for you. And that, that seems like a very rigid thing. God's saying, you'll be okay because the grace that I've given you is sufficient to carry you through that. And that's a very true thing. That's a very wonderful thing. Uh, but... The God that most of us know is just a rigid, straight being that's one way all the time. It's not God at all. And you want to get close enough to God where you know God that would say to you, my grace is sufficient for you. But here in this passage of Scripture, we're about to see where Paul is charged with a great task. Uh, not Paul, but Moses is charged with a great task. God says that he's going to be graceful. And Moses says, that's not enough. That's not going to be enough. That's not going to be enough. And I, I was talking about in Sunday school, I heard some great things in the, as, as a child, and I saw some things that were very scary that, uh, that did make me fearful of God. But if you, if you only know the God that is uh, judgment, and I do believe in judgment. I believe in being judgmental. I believe, uh, I believe there's no safer place than in a society that's judgmental about what things right now being judgmental is not just saying this is wrong and that's wrong, but there's a, there's a, a, we're not humanists, but there is a human factor to the thing. This is wrong and that's wrong, but that person that you're being judgmental about, there is a remedy. And that's the position that a Christian ought to take. A Christian ought to say, well, that's wrong. That's, that, that's bad. Uh, in this generation, you know, you've got uh, uh, at an alarming rate, at an alarming rate, ladies are having children out of wedlock and raising children with no dads. That's wrong. Yeah. 
That's what, well, we ought to love the child. Okay, well, yeah, you absolutely ought to love the child, but that doesn't release the, the design that God gave to begin with, Amen. that them little babies need daddies. Yes. That daddy's at home. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And God set up a thing to where you get married before you do those things. Yeah. And if you've been in a situation like that, thank God for God's forgiveness. Yeah. But that's what I, I'm trying to give you an illustration of you, you have to judge a thing as right because the next generation has to know those right things too. But man, at the same time, look, these people are already in trouble, but we need to find out how to get those people that are in trouble as well as the do-gooders. We've got to find, find a way to get the people that are in trouble from point A to point B in their life and from point A right here on earth to point B in heaven. And that's the kind of God we serve, a God that's interested in getting us to that place. Amen. Uh, while we do serve a God that is judgmental and a God that hates sin and God, a God that has holier eyes than to look upon sin, He's also given the ultimate price. He gave His life's blood for you. He gave His own Son for you so that He can get you from the place where you are less than the place where you are, the place where you've come short. He wants to get you from that place to the place where He is, and He wants to get you there in the best possible way. David. And the, 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 I think one of the great keys to that is, are you willing to go? Yeah. And if you're willing to go, man, He's willing to bring you along. Uh, some of you, some of us, He'll have to bring along slowly. Some of us he can bring along a little faster. Some of us are going to bump our heads a lot along the way. And some of us are going to seem like flying colors, pass with flying colors. Whatever the case is, man, if you want to go, you can. Yeah. If you want to go with God, you can. That's the point of this message here. Sometimes God's going to say, my grace is sufficient for you. And you're going to have to take that. You're going to have to walk with that. But sometimes, listen, you're not dealing with an unmovable God. That to where you can't get down on your knees and plead with Him or stand right on your feet and plead with Him and say, Hey, I know your grace is sufficient for me, but I need this. I need this kind of help. And God, that's the kind of God that we serve. Uh, the Bible says we don't ser serve a God that can't be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And you ought to be just thankful about that. That ought to move you. Amen. When you see how frail that you are. I know all of us all of us men and some of you ladies too like to think you're so tough and got all this, you know, all this strength and strength of mind and strength of body and uh, skillful in a lot of ways. A lot of men are skillful in a lot of ways. A lot of us don't like to a lot of us don't like to admit our faults or weaknesses or anything like that. But you know in your heart the weaknesses that you have. Amen. You know in your heart the faults that you have. Yeah. And God's still willing Amen. to come down and help you get where you Amen. need to go. Sure. If, you wouldn't be, if you wouldn't be willing to admit to me your weaknesses, I wouldn't blame you about for that not one bit. I hope you keep your integrity, but don't keep your integrity before God. Get on your face once in a while and say, God, I, I'm right here and I need to be over there. Help me get there. Amen. Amen. Whether that's a Amen. spiritual thing or whether it's a physical thing, whatever Amen. the case might be. God, I need your help. Yeah. Amen. Now, God says to Moses, I want you to do this here. The, look in verse 11. It says, I better get on to preaching. I told, brother, I told Pastor Ryan I didn't need a lot of time this morning. It said, And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. Don't you covet that? Yeah. When the, Bible say, when the Bible says that uh, Abraham was a friend of God, I said, I, I want to do that. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Uh, I like, uh, I like, uh, y'all see how big I am. You see how great of a stature that I, no, so you don't see. I'm a little fella. I'm a little fella. Always been a little fella. And uh, when I was younger, I could make up for that through exercise and you know get you know get a little stronger but I'm getting older now uh, but that doesn't change the fact I've always enjoyed having big friends yeah. amen yeah. I got a brother from another mother right over there we, uh, sister Carla amen what a blessing she was amen uh, did you know that uh, sister Carla wasn't uh, I mean you know I hope uh, you know don't get offended with me over there you know uh, Carla, from time to time, she'd have a problem. She'd start smoking again or something like that. 
And uh, she had a lot of, you know, things like that that most Christians would say that's a fault. And it is a fault. There's no use in dancing around it. Uh, but Carla had one of the best, one of the best Christian spirits as I've ever seen in my life. Uh, that's what I'm trying to get across to you here. This, uh, this idea that God is so rigid that he's not able to work outside of your ideas of what normal Christianity is. And there is a normal Christianity. There's no question that is that a person ought to stop drinking and stop smoking and, and stop carousing and start reading their Bible and start going to church. And all that's true and all that's right. Uh, but man, if you've ever read the life of David, he, he colored outside the lines so many times. I mean, that, that's what you see is people getting outside the lines and God coming along and uh, fixing things up where it looked like a good picture. Amen. Amen. But anyway, what I was trying, I got to thinking about Carla, what a blessing she was to me. Amen. But uh, that's a big boy over there. Amen. Uh, Eric's went downstairs, but that's my friend. And I said, man, I feel pretty safe around here. And then got uh, little David over there. <laughs> anyway, little David, like, squatting the building, amen? <laughs> Sometimes I, think, I thought about, many times I thought about, man, I bet David got beat up all the time. Eric and, and Ryan, uh, man, they're big guys and strong guys. I thought, man, I wonder if David, but grab a hold of his arm sometime when you walk by. It, dude ain't getting beat up by nobody. I like big friends is what I'm trying to say, hey, man. It feel kind of safe. Uh, I, uh, when I was in the Marine Corps, I felt, I felt like I was, I was probably the strongest and in the best shape as I've ever been in my life. I could fight already because I got beat up every day. As a kid, man, I got beat up because I was little. But anyway, you get tougher, and, and I, I was feeling just like a oh, United States Marine. Right. Uh, come home on leave, walk around town. <laughs> what? what? You know how you know how stupid people are with. <laughs> and. Uh, I had a friend in the Navy, Mike Jenkins. He was crazy as could be. That guy was crazy. Mike Jenkins was in the Navy. He decided he didn't want to be in the Navy. And he got in trouble and uh, got called in. What They got a thing called office hours in the Navy. It's a Marine Corps thing, too, because uh, the Marines are men's department of the Navy. Uh, but they, they, uh, they called him... <laughs> Uh, they called him in. They called him into the office, and they say, he's, they said, uh, "What's the matter with you?" Basically, is what they were saying. He said, "Well, I I don't want to be in the navy. And he he shouldn't have been that way, but he was. So what you gonna do about it? You can't do nothing about it. Mike Jenkins is big as a house." Uh, so he said, uh, well, you, got, you signed the contract, and you're going to have to do this. And they gave him that big speech that they give everybody when they decide they don't want to be in the military. So Mike reaches down on the guy's desk and opens up his uh, stapler. That's something that they had to put papers together before y'all got computers. And he, he opens up that stapler and whacks it down on that guy's hand on the desk. And Lord have mercy, they put him in the brig and then they... They discharged him, and he got out. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, Mount Ray, North Carolina, is a little behind the times, and we're both sitting around, and I'm on leave, and he's discharged and got a job. The thing about getting discharged from, they still work to do once you get out, so you may as well stay in if you're in. But anyway, this, uh, this guy rides by, and we're standing out there and stuff, and somebody says something, been causing problems for years, and he rides by and says something, I'm like, oh, son, I'm about to eat you up. I, and before I could say anything, Mike Jenkins had went through the window of that guy's car, and it, his feet were hanging, it was the funniest sight you ever seen, his feet were hanging out the door, and he was just in there pounding that guy, and, you shouldn't act like that. But it sure was nice to see, amen. <laughs> He was this big, overweight, gigantic Navy guys just wailing into this guy, man, just beating. Him. And I thought, man, with big friends, there's not much you got to worry about. I mean, you just got to stand around and look like you weigh 112 pounds. And if you got any problems, then you just, oh, oh. And then all your big friends will just beat the daylights out of you. Hey, man, the. And, you know, that's why, you know, you got people running their mouth and stuff. They don't come say it to me. It's not because they're afraid of me. I got some big friends. 
<laughs> and then I, I got a son-in-law that's as tall as indoors back there, and uh, Tommy over there, he's big. Uh, he's old, he's old now, but he's big enough, you don't want to jump on him, amen. Brother Dave back there by the door, that, them all big friends, amen. Uh, I've given an extremely long illustration about that just to say, hey, God the biggest friend amen. you can ever have. And all you got to do, man, when things start looking like they're overwhelming, is just get somewhere and start looking frail. Oh, God. Oh, God. And watch him, watch him show out. Next thing you know, he'll, he'll have his feet hanging out the window. <laughs> Beating on whatever problem you got. Listen, I believe God go to bat for you like that, if you will. I mean, I got to preach this message. Holy cow. He says, The Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. See, that's the illustration I was talking about. Paul, uh, God told Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. He said, uh, Moses saying, you told, me I, he, you told me you knew me by name, and you told me uh, that I'd found grace in your sight. He said, uh, now for I, there, therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people, and he said, and this is God, and he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Uh, Moses is saying, now you're going to have me do this great big job. I want to know who you're going to send to help me. Uh, when God first called Moses, he said, I can't speak. It's a funny thing, though, because the rest of the time you ever hear anything about Moses, he's doing the speaking, amen. Uh, God's, uh, Moses says, I can't do this job because I can't speak good. And so God says, okay, I'll send, I'll send your brother with you. I'll send Aaron. Matter of fact, I already sent him because I knew you was going to have excuse after excuse after excuse. He's already on his way to come meet you. And Moses said, okay, I got somebody to go with me. Now God says, bring these people up into the promised land. And Moses says, uh, now you said for me to bring these people up. But I want to know who you're going to send with me. I want to know who's going to help me. And this is a big job I've got. This is a big thing I've undertaken to do here. I want to know who you're going to send with me. And this time God didn't say, I'm going to send Joshua or I'm going to send Aaron. He said, I'm going to go with you. Amen. Ain't that good enough? If you could just get God's people to realize that. God will help you with that. Oh, man, you see people struggling. Man, yeah. Christians are struggling today. Yeah. Yeah. We, live, we live in a society where things have been put so far to the side that uh, I never dreamed that we'd see a day. And I, I suppose it's been like that through all history. But I didn't live in all history. I've just known my little lifetime. But I, there's Christians still hooked on drugs and alcohol and yeah. pornography yeah. and different stuff like that. And people say, how am I going to quit? How am I going to quit? And uh, God would say, my grace is sufficient for thee. And that would be a good enough answer. But he'd say, i go with you. Yeah. 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 How about that? I'll help you. Yes, sir. I got a little sermon I was uh, going to preach at some point in time. And there's a little passage in the Gospels that says there's something going on. I couldn't quote the passage to you. But the little phrase out of that verse said, they went and told Jesus. Yeah, how about that? How about that? Yeah. So I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can answer the call to preach. I don't know if I can quit doing this. I don't know if I can tell Robert down at the workplace about the Lord. I don't know. The Lord wants me to do this thing. The Lord wants me to move from where I am to this other place. I don't know if I can do it, but I can tell you this, God will go with you. Amen. Some people some people are not going to be willing to go with you. But God will go with you. All your friends may not leave the worldly life or the worldly habits and go with you, but God will go with you. God will go with you. And Moses says this, he says, so, well, it says, he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. 
And he said unto him, Moses talking to God now, verse 15, If thy presence go not with me, carry this not up hence. Hey, you ought to get uh, what I started off talking about, about a God of rules and regulations, but rather you ought to know God, who he is. Look what this verse says. He says, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. Hey, you ought, to, you ought to get the mindset and say, Look, God, I ain't going to quit these cigarettes till you go with me. Yeah. I mean, what's the use in quitting smoking anyway if God ain't going to go with you? Yeah. And what's the use in giving up a worldly lifestyle if God ain't going to go with you? Hey, I don't want a life of just rules. I'm made of flesh and blood like everybody else. If, 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 if that's all there is to it, then I'm going to keep watching TV. I'm going to keep going to the movies and watching stuff I ought not. I'm going to keep drinking beer I ought not to do. I'm going to keep doing things I ought not do if there's no God to go with me. Yeah. Hey, if there's no God, the Bible says we're of all men most miserable. Yes, I've heard people say, you know, well, if I live my way and there's no such thing as God, then I'm better off than you because I lived a better life. The Bible says, I, I don't care what you think or what you feel, the Bible says if there's no resurrection and if there's no God, then we are of all men most miserable. Amen. We're putting away all the things that the flesh enjoys for nothing. But we're not putting it away for nothing. We're putting it away because there's a God that's worthy to put away these things for the reward, listen, you, you think smoking is a reward to you? You think pornography gives you some kind of fulfillment? You think drinking gives you some kind of pleasure or some kind of high? Wait till you see the joy and the peace and the assurance that comes from walking with God when you give those things up. Amen. Amen. He said, if you're not going to go with me, I'm not going to go. Hey, listen, if God don't go with me, I ain't going to preach. I, if God don't come with me to preach tonight, I ain't going to preach. Amen. 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 If I, uh, listen, if I go to my house, I want God to go with me and Amen. talk to me about what He wants me to say next time. Yeah. I want to sit down sometimes and be quiet sometimes and listen to what He has to say because I, I can't do this by myself. Yeah, right. Wouldn't even try to do it by myself. Amen. It's useless to do it Amen. by yourself. Amen. 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 You know, well, I got somebody's commentary to tell me what to say. Forget that, man. God's got something Amen. to say to you. Yeah. How am I supposed to understand the Bible? Just open it up and read it. If God's going with you, He'll talk to you about it. He'll open your mind about it. Man, get God with you on the matter. Oh, I couldn't preach, but God will go with you. I couldn't be no missionary, but God will go with you. God will go with you. Oh, I know this. Young men, young women, I know. I, I can remember. Uh, just fretting sometimes about, oh, I'm about to get married. Man, am I going to be a good husband? About to, you know, I see the way uh, my family was and how husbands and wives was and how it always didn't work out. Man, will I be a good husband? Will I be there after 10 years? Will I fuss at my wife like my dad fussed at my mom when I was a little bitty boy? Uh, will, will I give my children uh, all those bad memories? I know probably ladies think that same way and worry about if they'll be a good wife and then they become a wife and they worry about whether they'll be a good mom. Hey, I tell you this, if God goes with you, yeah. Yeah. Amen. Woo! Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Hallelujah! I can remember I can remember sometimes in my life when I was a younger fella, dad's telling their daughters, You better run that boy off. He ain't never gonna he ain't never gonna amount to nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Get away from here, boy. You ain't you ain't good enough to date my daughter. Get on out of here. I can remember stuff like that. I remember stuff like that. Hey, I can also tell you I've been married twenty three years, be twenty four years in just a little bit, and I never hit my wife. Amen. 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 I never spent a night away from home because we was mad. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I never spent a, uh, I, I never spent a night away from my wife that I was glad to be away from her, but I laid there at night going, "Oh man, I wish I could see my darling." Yeah. Amen. And I can tell you that I'm not talking about me, but I know these millions and millions of ladies that would love to have a dedicated husband. Yeah. Amen. You say, well, what makes you so good? You a great man? No, I'm a terrible man. But in my marriage, God's going with me. Amen. God's going with me. Hey, the stakes are too high to do it any other way except for with God. Hey, my, I believe my children deserve a dad that loves their mother. They deserve a dad that loves God and wants to do God, things God's way. I believe they deserve that. Amen. Amen.
Believe that with all my heart. There's no way I could be a good dad. No way I could be a good dad. I mean, just irresponsible as the day is long. But God been going with me. Amen. Amen. God been helping me. As far as I know now, there might have been some talk behind my back, but as far as I know, I don't believe my wife has ever had to go to her daddy and say, Daddy, he's giving me this trouble. I don't believe there's a day where my wife ever went to her mom and said, I'm sorry I married that guy. You say, does that make you the greatest man on earth? No, it don't. No, it don't. But God been going with me. God been helping me. Amen. God been helping me. Amen. Amen. God go with me. Yes, sir. And he says, uh, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Uh, is it not in that thou goest with us, so shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth? He says, uh, how are we going to know? How's everybody going to know that we're your people except that you go with us? Mm -hmm. Amen. Hey, uh, we, we've had a testimony about it. L listen, I thank God that God's given man the ability to perform operations. Thankful for that. Amen. I'd never be a stupid pastor to say, hey, don't go to the doctors. Now, I know what the Bible says about that. I know what the Bible says about those things. But I thank God for what a doctor can do uh, the doctor has helped me. The doctor has helped family members. And the doctor, uh, we talked about that this morning. God done a great thing. God used doctors to do that. But hey, there's no question in my mind that God went with a little loop through those Amen. things. Amen. Amen. God goes through it. God goes through those things with us. See, how are we going to know? How, how are we going to... And listen, there is no way... Listen, there is no way that these doctors doing all these things don't see the miracles of God. There's no way that they don't. I don't know if they harden their hearts to it or if they accept it and shout about it. I don't know because I can't give an account for people that I don't know. I don't try to hang around doctors. But what I'm trying to say is I can see it all the way. I mean, I can see it all the way. I've, I've seen times when we lay hands on people and, and prayed for them and God helped them with no physician whatsoever. But there's many times where you pray for people and you lay hands on them, you ask God to help, and God has them go through the operation, or God has them go through the trials of that sort of thing, and God brings them through. And there's no way on this planet that, that people can't see that God went with them. Yes, sir. Amen. We talk about a good marriage and a godly marriage. There's no way that people that are out there trying to go through it through their own strength and their own power can't look at a marriage like that and say, boy, God is all over that. There's no way. There's no way you can see God. The Bible says no man has seen God at any time and no man can see God and live. But when you begin to look at the lives of the men and women who serve God, you can see them. Yeah. These are not people that's going through nothing. These people are going through the same things that everybody else in the world is going through. But they go through it with grace. They go through it with power. Amen. And sometimes when things turn for the worse, they still got good attitudes. Yeah. You say, what is that? That's God. Yes, sir. That's God. Amen. He says, wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. I'm trying to preach the message, but they, this stuff just keeps jumping off the page. God knows you by name. Yeah. God knows who you are. God knows what you're going through. God knows what you're through. He knows, you say, boy, I'm such a failure. God knew that when he saved you. You say, I'm such a failure. God knows that and he wants to save you. God knows who you are. Amen. Amen. Listen, get religion out of your mind. The reason Christ died on the cross is because you couldn't live a perfect life before he saved you and you can't live one after he saved you. 
if you can live one after he saved you, then he'd have just saved you and saved him the, 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 the ridicule of dying on the cross. But he had to die for you. He had to take your place. And if he took your place, he'll go with you, don't you think? If he took your place on the cross, don't you think he'll go with you to all the little crosses that you go through on a daily basis? All the little worries that you go through. All the little things that get in your mind and consume your mind. And everything in this world consumes your mind to the point you think, oh, I don't even know how we'll win. You already won. You already won. Amen. You say, oh, what are they well, going to take our guns? Ain't we glad we had a good constitutional ruling on this magazine ban stuff? I, stuff like that. I'm interested in that stuff, but it's not going to ruin my life. God was around a long time before the Constitution was. Amen. Oh, they're going to take this or they're going to take that, but they can't take God. Amen. Amen. I hope God's bigger to you than a 20-round magazine. Amen. Amen. I hope God's bigger to you than just a piece of dirt. Yeah. I hope God's bigger to you than just what your car, what kind of car you drive, what kind of house you live in. Yeah. Amen. God go with you to these Amen. things. Amen. 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 I know thee by name. And look, he says, and, and he said, I beseech thee. Here's the message. He said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. He said, I, I, I want you, uh, I know you got this job to do, but I need somebody to go with me. Okay, I'll, I'll go with you. Okay, uh, uh, I know you're going to go with me and you're going to help us out, but I also want to see you. Something that no man ever done before. And God, uh, he said, I want to see your glory. I want to look. What he's saying is, I want to look at you in the face. Well, hey, man of transfiguration, you looked at him in the face. Yeah. But he said, I want to look at you in the face. Now, he said, I will make all my goodness. This is God's answer when, when Moses says that. He said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passes by, that I will put thee in the cliff of the rock, and will cover thee, with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not, shall not be seen. Moses said, I want to see you. And God said, boy, you can't see me and live. You can't handle that. You're not big enough to see that. You're not strong enough to see me like I really am. He said, uh, but I will put my hand over you. Amen. He says, there's a place by me. Now, in our everyday lives, in our everyday weakness, in our everyday faulty mindset, in our everyday misgivings, the things we're deceived about or the things that we don't know or the things that we don't understand, there's no way that we can get next to God and live. There's no, day we can, there's no way we can walk with God on a daily basis just in the condition that our flesh is in or our mind is in or our education is in or our financial state is in. There's no way we can walk with God on a daily basis like that. It's almost impossible to make a living in this world and to live with God at the same time. But God says there's a place. There's a place by me. God's made a way for us to get next to Him. To be able to enjoy us his presence and not be burnt to a cinder by it. Unless we can go through all the verses of Scripture, but I'm going to tell you, the place that's next to God is in His Word. Hey, you can get to know God in the Word just like you know a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a husband or a wife, just like you know your little children, just like you know your own father. You can get in the book and you can see His, his personality and His character. Listen, if you don't know that the law of God was given to men, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. God didn't give that to man only to judge him and to make him guilty, but he gave you that law to show you who he is. He says you don't commit adultery. Why? Because God don't commit adultery. God wouldn't steal. God wouldn't lie. That's not who God is. The law is just God's personality. You can get in there and find out who God is, how he acts, how he responds. Pattern your life after that. Get to know him like you know your friend. There's a place by him. 
and you got it sitting right there in your lap. And the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that you can come boldly before the throne of grace. That's a place by God. To be able to pray, Brother Tommy, is a place by God. Amen. Listen, the Bible says there's no temptation taking you but such as is common to man. But God, who is faithful, will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Listen, that prayer time is a way to escape. It's a place by God. It's right next to God. Hey, you, you're about to fold and go under. Cry out to God. Hey, I got an idea. Cry out to God before you feel like you're going to fold and go under. If you're in His presence, man, it's hard to feel like you're going to be defeated. Hey, if you got a relationship with Him where you know that He knows your name and you know that, it, that His Word is true, it's hard to feel like that you're able to be defeated. Not because of your own strength, but what God's done for you. Amen. You know Him. You know Him. There's a place by Him. There's a place by Him. And then let me say, right here where we're at this morning, this is a place. Yeah. When God said there's a place by Him, it's a cleft of the rock. That rock is Christ, by the way. Yeah. That rock is Christ. But this is, this is Christ's body right here. Look around at your brother and sister. And, and listen, these people are saved by the grace of God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it says, when the whole church be come together into one place. What a wonderful thing that would be if the whole church would come together into, into one place. But here we are. And the Bible says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there will I be in the midst of them. He's here. This is the place. If you want to get next to God, don't lay out Wednesday night. This is the place. This is where he'll be. And listen, you think, well, this is such a wonderful local church and God's here. Listen, everywhere where people are gathered in his name, God's there. I believe there's people that are saved. I believe that there's people that are saved. They're in churches that are doctrinal wrecks. But if there's a few people in there that saved, and they, with, with all the sincerity that they knew how to deal with, I believe if they went to a church that don't even preach the gospel, I believe God went with that person. You say, why? Because God goes with us everywhere. And that doesn't mean God approves of false doctrine or anything like that. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying is, is God meets with His people. God is here this morning. But He won't just stay here after you leave. He'll go home with you. Amen. And He'll come back with you tonight. Yeah. And He'll go home with you tonight. Yeah. He'll be back here Wednesday night with you. We'll come and preach and pray and teach or whatever we do. And God will be here. And God will be happy as He can be to be here. Because He's the one that invented this stuff to begin with. Amen. Amen. Oh, we get well, we have to get up and go to church. No, man, you get to go. Amen. Yeah. You get to go. Yeah. Listen, I'm done telling people now. You are stupid if you don't come to church. But I, listen, uh, what what I'm what I want to get across to you is, man, you ought not to have somebody beat you over the head to go to church and do the things you ought to do. Man, he's worthy to do it. Sure. Lord have mercy on this planet. People would actually long to be in the presence of Joe Biden. If there, if there was a motorcade go by, there would be people lined up on 300 to try to get a look at that fool. Well, man, God, the God of this universe is good and ready to, to hang out with you all that you want to hang out with him. And all he says, there's a place by me. Listen, stop saying to God, Stop telling God there's a place by you. God says to you, there's a place by me. Sure. Yeah. Amen. God is not on our side. We're on God's side. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's he that hath made us and not we ourselves. Yeah. And listen, your opportunity this morning is to just get on God's side. There's a place for you. Yeah. That whole passage reminds me of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 6. It says God has made us accepted in the beloved. In the beloved. That's right in here. Yes, sir. There's a place for you. There's a purpose for you. The only thing you got to ask yourself is, is God more important than all these? Yeah. Is God's work more important than all my works? If it is, there's a place for you. Amen. There's a place for you. If it's not, you repent. There's a place for you too. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and grace this morning. I pray you'd help us now. Have mercy upon us. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your goodness and for meeting with us this morning. And I pray you continue to meet. Save that soul, God. Lord, uh, encourage that heart. Lord, they save, but they just discouraged as they can be because the flesh is very strong. The flesh is very strong, dear God. The flesh is weak, but the flesh is strong in many ways.
Lord, I pray you'd help us this morning. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen.